and the final topic of this chapter on functions is algebra of real functions just like you can add and multiply to real numbers you can also add multiply subtract to real functions so for that we consider two real functions f and g note that these are real functions that means they have to both be real valued in other words the codomain should be the set of real numbers or more generally it just simply means that the values of f and g will be real numbers and along with that the domain should be a subset of the set of real numbers in order to define these algebraic operations on these functions say we are going to for example add f and g it's necessary that we choose the same domain so let's now see what these things are the first one is addition actually i should write addition of two real functions but that's understood here so i'm simply writing addition the sum of f and g is the real function denoted by f plus g it also has x as its domain and r as its codomain defined by this rule okay so that's what we mean by adding two real functions having the same domain let us now see if it is legitimately a function or not first of all oh and what is it that we have to see to check that it's a legitimate function namely that condition that every element in the domain has a unique image in the code domain so let's do the verification here for the sum at least below this let x b we are saying that x itself is the domain of this sum also just like it is the domain of both f and g so we take an input small x from our domain now we know that capital x is also the domain of both f and g and they are legitimate functions instead of saying the uh, word i mean instead of using legitimate we say well defined functions since f and g are well defined functions on x on x means x is the domain of these functions because of that f of x and g of x are unique real numbers because f is well defined and this capital x is the domain of f so for any element in x f will give us a unique image of that x and that unique image is going to lie here that means it will be a unique real number just like that for this x g of x is also a unique real number because 
g is also a well defined function but we know already that when we add two given real numbers then we again get a unique real number so f of x plus g of x is also a unique real number. This shows that the image of x under this new function is first of all a real number and the second thing is that it is unique and that is why f plus g is also a well defined function. So f plus g is well defined. In other words, it is a function, it is a genuine function. We won't of course write all these things for the other things that will come next. Next we have difference or uh, well we are writing addition here so the next will be subtraction. The ink is not good because it is not going away properly. I will have to change this. But anyway, the next one is subtraction. The difference. of f and g is the real function f minus g. It also has x as its domain. So it is a real function. So it will be from x into r. defined by, you can already guess what I am going to write here, f of x minus g of x. So just like that one, this difference is also a well defined function with that same domain as its domain, with that same set as its domain. Then the next one is multiplication by a scalar why do we use the word scalar here by using this word do we mean that there is some kind of vector here actually there is but I won't go into the details of that uh, right now itself. Functions can also be thought of as vectors, but in what sense that is an advanced level topic. So we won't go into that, but just the use of this word scalar here is curious and it suggests that if there is scalar, then there should be a vector somewhere. So when you go to higher mathematical studies, you will see in what sense you can think of a function itself as a vector. And when you do that, ordinary numbers will take the role of scalars. So right now we do not have to attach too much significance to this word scalar, you just you can also write multiplication by a real number, that is it. If 
C is a real number, the product of F by C is the real function which is denoted by the symbol CF. That is also going to have x as its domain and of course r as its codomain defined by this rule. The value of cf at x, x of course is coming from this capital X, that is understood, there is no need to again write that. And this is nothing but the product of the two real numbers c and f of x. Obviously, for any x in x, f of x is a real number, so you can multiply f of x and c. So that is the image of the new function cf at the input x. And like uh, the sum and difference, this is also a well-defined function. For every x in capital X, we are going to get a unique real number as the image of that x under this function. And fourth one, product or multiplication. Multiplication of two functions. The product of f and g is the real function fg. We don't have much, uh, there is only a little left in this section. I am saying this because it is getting messy. I should not have used this ink but accidentally I did. I mean I did not know it will turn out like this. But uh, please bear with me. We do not have much left. So it is the real function f g again with that same set x as domain and r as codomain defined as or defined by this rule. So fg has the value at x which is the product of the values of f and g at x and this is also a well defined function. And finally there is a fifth one as well. But for the fifth one you can imagine what this will be. This will be the quotient of two functions. But we need that uh, extra condition that you always need when you divide something by something else. You need the denominator to be non-zero. Since in this case we are dealing with functions and not just single real numbers. So we want the denominator function for which we will choose g to never be zero. So that we can have this next definition. If g of x is not equal to 0 for all x in x, then the quotient f over g or f divided by g is the real function again having domain x and is a function into r
defined by F divided by G at X is equal to F of X divided by G of X. So we divide the value of F at X by the value of G at X. Because of this condition, that division uh, has no difficulty. Okay, you can do it for any X. And just like all the other algebraic combinations, this one also is a well-defined function. Now let's see two examples. The first example gives us two functions. Let f of x b x square and g of x b 2x plus 1 find f plus g of x f minus g of x then f g of x so that means some difference product and also quotient not one thing however that um, while defining this we have to keep in mind that dividing by zero thing okay we have to avoid that So we are going to solve it like this. You see, now let me tell you something about a convention. Actually, strictly speaking, simply giving a formula like this is not enough to specify a function fully. We need to actually say what the domain is, what the co-domain is and then say what the function does to an input. Here we are only saying that if the input is x, the function gives the output x square. But what type of x? That must be specified. However, in calculus, specifically in calculus, and in many other places also, but specifically in calculus, there is a convention that allows us to simply write a formula like this and that alone will tell us what the function is. But what is that convention? That convention is that, see, you need to just simply say what the domain is. Let me write like this. So what we have done here is this. We have said what f of x is. Okay, it is some formula. But we have, haven't said what the domain A of the function is and what the O domain B is. In calculus, we are not really interested in this O domain. And that is why in some texts, the name codomain is absent. These texts do not give any name to the second set. The first set, however, is invariably called the domain of the function. Because that is important. You need to know where the inputs are coming from. But then once you know the inputs and you know the formula, you know the outputs. Okay, you know the outputs, but you don't really know in what set the outputs are lying. At least you know what the outputs are, so you can gather those outputs and make the image set, which we have called range, right? 
So once you know the domain and the formula for the function, you know the range, but you do not know the codomain. Now the thing in calculus is that the range is enough. There is no real need to know the codomain. Okay. So that means there is no real need to say what the codomain is. But what about the domain? At least you should say where the inputs are coming from, right? And the convention is this. You look at the formula and think of those inputs that will cause no problem. In other words, you look at the formula. In this case, for example, it is x square. Now, what are you going to put in place of x? Real numbers. You can put other things also. But in calculus, we are mainly uh, concerned with real numbers. So you put real numbers and you see what real numbers you can put in the formula. In this formula, is there, any, uh, is there going to be any problem if I put in place of x just about any real number? No, because every real number has a square. And that is why what is the largest set of real numbers that you can think in this situation, which can be the domain of our f. Obviously, the entire set of real numbers. So the convention is that the domain of f should be chosen to be the largest set of real numbers. That means the largest subset from which if you choose your input, there is no problem in calculating the output. And that domain has a name also. It's called the natural domain of the function. So when things are given like this, simply with formulas and nothing else, you should understand that in the background, the authors mean the natural domain. For this function, then the natural domain is R. Because that is the largest possible set of inputs that do not cause any problem. They qualify to be inputs because output can be calculated. In this case also for the second function g, also you can choose the domain to be r which is its natural domain. For any real number x, you can double it and then add 1 to that. No problem. However, some functions cause a little problem. For example, we have already come across this function. f of x equal to 1 divided by x. In this case, because it's a rational function, you have to make sure that the denominator does not become 0. And that is why now you cannot take r as the natural domain. From R, you have to remove this problematic point. Almost every real number offers no difficulty when you try to calculate this function except 1, which is 0. And that's why we remove 0. Now, if one wants, one can specify another smaller domain for this. For example, the set of positive real numbers. That's fine. And if you want to do that, you have then you have to specify the domain separately. But if simply this much is mentioned, you have to assume that the domain is this because that, that's the largest possible subset of R that can be chosen as the domain. Okay, so in this case also that's the situation. So in the background, we know that both F and G have R as their domain. Okay. And we are going to go ahead with the, that, with that information. But the ink today just spoiled everything. I'll fix it tomorrow. Okay, so these are just some things we discussed. The actual solution starts from here. We have
this that is f is a function from r to r and g is also a function from r to r because we are dealing with real functions so the codomain can be invariably chosen as r okay then there is uh, no problem in choosing that now so note that this r is playing the role of that common domain x in case of the definition the general definition x is simply allowed to be a subset of r well that is true here also because r is a subset of itself and that is why f plus g f uh, difference g f g they are all going to have that x itself as their domain which in this case is r and that is why f plus g is also a function from r to r where f plus g of x is equal to f of x plus g of x because that's what plus means and this is x square plus 2x plus 1 and incidentally this turns out to be x plus 1 whole square there is no need to write this but you can see that now so why not so this is only one of the things next if difference g is also this where for any real number x we have this and this is going to be x square minus 2x minus 1 and then the product if g is also a function from r to r where uh, in place of where you can use uh, such that if you want you can write such that this is going to be x square times 2x plus 1 there is in fact no need to simplify these things but it's expected i don't know why in the examination that you do simplify these things for example that's why we wrote x plus 1 whole square here So if you multiply the terms out, you will get 2x cube plus x square. But we have to calculate this also, and there is a problem. You see, although f and g have their natural domain, both of them have their natural domain R, the set of real numbers, but if you think of f divided by g and use the meaning of this this is nothing but f of x divided by g of x <coughs> and that becomes a rational function because f and g are both polynomial functions f is x square and g is 2x plus 1 so you have to then become careful because you are dividing by 2x plus 1 so the formula for f divided by g at the input x should be this but the denominator can be zero right it's a linear polynomial so it will be zero at precisely one point and that point is minus 1 divided by 2 
That means the natural domain of this function should not be R, it cannot be R. From R you have to subtract that, I mean remove that problematic point, minus 1 divided by 2. And accordingly, for the numerator also, you cannot take R as the domain. Here, in other words, you cannot choose. For forming this algebraic combination of F and G, you cannot choose the natural domain of F, but you have to uh, choose the slightly smaller domain, uh, the one where from R you remove minus 1 over 2. So while writing this thing, you have to write like that. Since g of minus 1 divided by 2 equal to 0, the function f divided by g should I write like this should have domain no I don't think so that uh, sounds a little weird or we can write like this um, we have because of this reason we have this from the set of real numbers from which minus 1 over 2 has been removed into the set of real numbers. This second set you can always choose real numbers. I mean for this type of factors, not for everything of course, where x square divided by 2x plus 1. Although it's understood that here x has to come from this, but if you want, you can add with this where x is a real number that is not equal to minus 1 over 2. If you want, if you want to emphasize this further, you can add that extra part here. Okay, so that is this example and then there is another one and in this other example uh, the domains however um, I mean the natural domains of the given functions both of them are not R. Let f of x b square root of x and g of x b x oh it's okay so it's already given b defined on this interval, the set of non-negative real numbers. That means zero and positive real numbers. Actually there is no problem with G in taking R as the domain. But that's a problem with F because here you have the non-negative square root of X of the input. 
and we know that in order to get a real number when we use square root the thing inside the radical sign should be a non negative real number not a negative real number if you take the square root of a negative real number you do not get real number you get a non real complex numbers that we do not discuss right now okay we mean to say that here we have uh, real outputs because we are considering real functions now real functions have to be real valued functions the outputs should be real numbers that's why f needs this domain so we have decided to choose this itself also as the domain of g although we could have chosen a larger domain for g and we need both the domains to be the same because then only you can define this sum product all these things so again the same thing find f plus g of x f minus g of x f g of x and f divided by g of x because we have already seen one example i can afford to be a little sketchy here i won't write everything i will simply write the domains and the i mean the main thing and the function rules so f plus g will be a function that is going to look like this and its formula of course will be this f plus g of x is f of x plus g of x which is square root of x plus x then f minus g of similarly is a function from the set of non negative real numbers into the set of real numbers such that this will be f of x minus g of x which ultimately is this then if g also is that type of function and its value at x is going to be square root of x times x and if you wish to use the rules of exponents here you can write in its place x to the power 3 over 2 or if uh, you simply want to write just this you it will look nice if you write x root x not root x x i hope you uh, know how this comes because square root of x is x to the power 1 over 2 that you have to then add with the exponent of this other power of x which is 1 1 over 2 plus 1 is 3 over 2 so that's how this one comes and if divided by g but uh, be a little careful so again we are dividing f fx by gx so what is gx gx is x can x be zero yes of course precisely when x itself is zero now the domain of f and g the common domain does have zero so you in this case you have to remove zero from this interval otherwise the function won't be well defined that is why instead of choosing this closed ray okay closed on this side you choose the open ray 
or in other words you feel what the just give me a moment I will throw out this ink bottle tomorrow. Tonight I won't do it. I didn't want to put more ink, but I have no choice. What the hell? Let me just try. Okay, let me put more ink. That means instead of choosing this closed ray, you have to choose this open interval, 0, comma infinity. So that should be the domain of your function. And of course, the codomain is R. And the value of the function at x should be f of x divided by g of x so that means square root of x divided by x and again here also if you want to use the rules of exponent you have this which is this And this is where actually the section ends, the chapter itself ends. After this we have miscellaneous examples though. And then we will have to solve miscellaneous exercises as well. But do we not have uh, ordinary exercises after this section? I think we have. So that we will see in the next video. Now before I uh, end today's video, I want to say something about these things. You see the algebra, the word algebra, what do we uh, think of when we hear this word algebra? We think of operations like addition, multiplication, all these things. So you may think that it is because of that, that we are saying algebra of real functions. Well, in a sense that's true because just like we can add, multiply, subtract, divide numbers, here we are doing those things with functions. That's true, but the algebra, the word algebra is also a technical word in mathematics. For example, you have uh, the notion of rational numbers, say. You know precisely what this word means or what these words mean rational numbers. It has the definition. Just like that. So that's the technical term. Rational number has only one meaning. It's nothing vague. We have a precise definition for that. The word algebra also has a precise definition. And it is in that definition that one realizes in what sense functions can be treated as vectors and numbers can be treated as scalars. And when one tries to extend these operations, in what way? You add two functions, right? You can add three functions also. In that way you can extend. In much the similar way that we, uh, in which we have handled say two functions. You can also define the sum of three functions, four functions, and so on. You can also define the sum of infinitely many functions. But when you do that, you encounter further problems in uh, defining precisely what the meaning of that sum is. And such sums are extremely important in mathematics. You can do this with product also, but sums of infinitely many functions is an extremely important thing in mathematics. And it solves many problems which otherwise are unsolvable. Many problems which arise outside of mathematics. 
You will later on see there are some things called differential equations which arise in calculus, from calculus. And these differential equations, just like ordinary equations, can be solved. When you solve an ordinary equation, what do you get? Say you, because we have created so much mess, why don't I create a little more? Say when you solve this equation, for example, This type of equations we get every now and then. So when we solve this equation, we get these two solutions, minus 1 and 1, which are numbers, right? Just like that, when you solve a differential equation, as solutions, you do not get numbers, but you get functions. In the algebra of numbers, if I say somewhat loosely, equations have solutions that are elements of that algebra, that is numbers, in, I mean, whatever you have in that algebra. In the algebra of functions, Solutions of differential equations are functions. And some solutions of some very important and specific differential equations appear as sums of infinitely many functions. When you, for example, heat a metallic plate, or anything actually, then one can ask, uh, say, what is the temperature of the plate? What the temperature of the plate is going to be at this location and at this point of time? That's a question. That is governed by a differential equation called the heat equation. When one tries to solve that equation, the solution appears in the form of an infinite sum, a sum of infinitely many functions. That is why these notions are needed. It's not just that we are defining things on whim, whatever we want to define, they are actually needed. So whatever you are going to see here and uh, further, I mean, going ahead, all of those things actually have arisen out of necessity, okay? It's not merely a game. So with that, I am going to stop here itself. And tomorrow, what do we have? I think we have linear algebra. And in linear algebra, we are solving problems right now. So tomorrow, we will have a community post. So see you tomorrow with that. Until then, this is me, Lucifer from a mathematical group. Have a nice day.